everybody, George Kenner. Today, we're going to review the Atom Stack Portable Laser, the P9. Now, before I go much further, I have been asked by manufacturers to review several of their machines. I'm not sponsored by these companies. Some of them will provide an affiliate link, so if you want to sponsor the channel and there's a link for this machine down in the comments then or in the description, then you could, if you'd like, use that link and support the channel. Not important to me or allow anyone to control what I say. Now, this is about a $400 laser. I really like it. It looks like Star Wars meets diode laser. And I was really pretty surprised at some of the results. First, let's talk about the packaging. The packaging was more than adequate. In fact, it has a nice appearance if you were to give it to somebody as a gift. It looks like they're getting something. There's not a surprise because the box is clearly labeled. If you go to start putting it together, really the assembly is, is rather easy. You take this portion, you slide it onto this grooved rail, which is really very firm, and then you screw on these two brackets. The laser is adjusted and comes on and off the machine like that with a thumb screw, which will tighten it. And pretty much it's all assembled. The wiring is all really pretty good. There was one difficulty that I had, and that was right here with the belt. Now, I'm gonna put a close up of what this looks like. In the instructions, it almost appears as though the belt is one continuous loop. Well, it's not. It's actually got two little brass grommets that have to fit into the bottom of a well-established track. It says that in the instructions, but it doesn't really show it. So if I were to rate the instructions, I had to spend another, oh, say 10 minutes trying to figure that out, look online to make sure that I was doing it properly, but it was really pretty easy to do. They provide these support brackets so that when you're going to put it together, they'll go right in underneath here and give you the stability that you'd like to have when you go to assemble it so you don't drop anything. And then this one goes right in here. So you're, they were really thinking when they engineered this out for somebody that's not really very experienced to put it together. So, you know, high, high grade, you know, five stars, say whatever you want for that. Now, this machine also runs, it doesn't have a proprietary software, it runs on Laser Gerbil. Now, Laser Gerbil is not my favorite system, but it's free. So, when I do these video reviews, I either use the proprietary comes with it free software or Laser Gerbil. Lightburn, in my view, is probably the go-to software, but there's an expense, and I want to show what you get for this cost without any additional expense. For a diode laser, it's approximately $60 to buy a light burn. Now, this, I put these out here to show you, this machine, this laser does not come with safety glasses, although I recommend them. There is really very little area where the laser light would escape. There is a viewing panel here that is a coated plastic that would protect your eyes. And it's a very easy to use system. What you do is you take a spacer like this, you take the laser, set it down, and to get the correct focal length, you put the piece down, lock the laser in place, and then pull the piece out. Now, this is actually something that I did. I'm gonna try and show this in a little better format. If not, I'll do a zoom in on it. The detail on this machine is phenomenal. Um, it's as good as any other machine that I have um, used or tested. As a matter of fact, I like this one for one special reason. I'm in the process of purchasing a CO2 laser. I got addicted to this stuff. It is apparent by all the manufacturers sending me their machines to review and share. I really think that, you know, getting involved in the laser hobby is both a lot of fun and you can end up with a commercial product. If I were to do, say, 10 of these, you have at least a $25 gift and you can buy these on Amazon for about 60 cents a piece. So why wouldn't somebody want to try this? Now, 
on the CO2 lasers, they run on what's called a ROIDA controller. And you'll take the information, you can either run it off your computer or get a small memory disk or in, depending upon the machine in CO2, this one works like a ROIDA controller. You can take the small memory disk, transfer it from your computer, so you do not have to have your computer hooked up to this and then run it right off of this control. Now, to me, for somebody that wants to get involved in the industry, having something similar to a Rowita controller could be a really beneficial little piece of equipment. You're already going to be familiar with the same operating system. And if you buy Lightburn as a software, you're going to go from the software that you have been using on this machine right into the same software that you would probably use on your CO2 laser. Now, there are some CO2 lasers out there. Um, I'll just use the most expensive, Epilog as a choice. They have a proprietary software. So for that machine, it probably wouldn't apply, but a Rowita controller for the majority of CO2s, it's, it's right there. They, the machine did come with a nice piece of protective metal to put underneath this so that if it got a little bit off track and would move into your table, it won't mar it, scratch it, or cut it, start it on fire. Um, one of the things I really like to do when I start one of these evaluations is I like to take a piece of MDF. And the reason for it is MDF is a really relatively constant grade material. When you go to something like a, a, a coaster, a cork coaster, a piece of slate, even a piece of plywood, it, it is not necessarily as consistent based upon the grain. Now there are 34 pages of instructions for in this booklet that are in English. It's really very well written. Um, I didn't have any problems. I do have to share that I have been playing around with these lasers for a while, so I'm becoming familiar with the language. So take some of what I say and discount it just a little bit. Would I call this a buy? Absolutely. And I think that the engineering quality that has gone into it is at least as good as anything else on the market. I do like the Ruida controller type function for this to be able to use with another software. I do not like laser gerbil. It's not my favorite thing. But when I look at the quality of engraving that, uh, or burn that came off of this piece, I don't think that it's... I think it's at least equal, if not even a tiny bit better than some of the other lasers that I've reviewed. I'm gonna put all of the lasers that I've reviewed in one playlist and hook them together. So if you're looking and you wanna know my opinion on the different machines, I have two more machines that just arrived yesterday um, that I will be reviewing also. I don't do comparisons. If I didn't like the machine, I'd send it back. This machine is going to end up becoming a gift for somebody that couldn't afford a machine. I, I don't keep them, um, though the one that I purchased, I've kept. I like it. It has a nice rotary system. Go to the Atom Stack website. They have additional lasers, including a rotary device. But this is a great machine, and it's going to find a home to somebody for somebody that uh, could really use it and couldn't afford it. And maybe start something off. You theoretically, you can make enough of these probably with one of these machines to afford to buy a more expensive machine and get you a, a little side hustle going. I wish everyone the very best. Any questions? I put, I will respond to every email sent to me. My email address is in the bottom. If you've got anything that you want to discuss, please let me know. If you have any comments about the video, post them. You're not going to hurt my feelings. I wish everybody the best and come back and visit me again soon. I hope you subscribed. Thank you.